my prayer is that we all will live a life that will come into the fullness of God's favor, walking in his grace continually. His grace that is sufficient unto all of his true children. Are you a true child of God? Why do I say true? Because there are so many people who claim to be children of God, but they live unto themselves. Do you live unto yourself or do you live unto God? What do I mean by living unto God? I am talking about the person who lives by the word of God, according to the word of God, and directed by the Holy Spirit. Today we are going to read Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward. And let me add verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed by those who heard him? Praise the Lord. Let's put in earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we slip away. And we are talking about the word of salvation. How many of us take heed to the word of salvation? How many of us take heed to the obedience of the commandments of God? These days, the commandments have been dismissed. These days, every form of restriction is no longer there. These days, it is wonderful to say that there are no restrictions you live anyhow because you are a child of God. Those are the kind of things we hear day in and day out. But are they true? True unto men, but not true unto God. Jesus said, if you love me, if you belong to me, obey my commandments. I said, my father will love you, will come and make a residence in you. Do you love him? Do you obey his commandments? Do you even accept that there are commandments? These days, the Commandments are called restrictions, legal, binding. You don't need to do it. You are being legalistic. Jesus is legalistic, or the scripture itself is legalistic. Whatever, however you want to put it. But Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. Are you obeying his commandments? He said, let us take endless heed to the things that we have heard. The word of deliverance. The word that Jesus came, and he gave an example. His angel spoke in the Old Testament, and those words were binding, and retribution came for the things that people did. The punishments came, the due judgments. You think that you neglect the word of salvation, and due judgment will not come? These days, Christianity has turned into whatever you can get, material things. If you get so much more, that you are a wonderful Christian. If you are not getting it, you get to the point that ministers will say poverty shows that you belong to the devil if you are poor. But Jesus said the poor shall always be among you. Were those ones supposed to be the children of the devil? And the scripture enjoins us to take care of the poor. Are we taking care of the children of the devil? To arrive at some kind of madness that poverty is devilish. I don't know how it, where it comes from. And that is where Christianity has moved away from the issues of salvation onto the issues of material things. You are looking at how to gain promotion to the next place, by crook or by hook. You are looking at how to acquire so much money, you get into an office, your only objective is to steal. You steal, share it with the church, and the so-called church is clapping hands for you. And what is it called? Divine favor. Which divine? Must be demonic divine. Take earnest heed to the things that you have heard, the word of salvation spoken by Jesus and spoken by those who heard him. Why would you keep talking about the things that are irrelevant? As a matter of fact, the so-called child of God comes out to give a testimony of how he has acquired five new cars. What is he doing? He has simply gotten an appointment into a government office. That's all. And the salary of that office cannot buy a second-hand version of one of those cars. But here he is. He has bought five. Add the prices together, add the cost together. It is like 
all of his salary for the next 30 years put together, wouldn't even buy one. But he has bought five. And nobody questions where you get your money from. No, everybody will clap hands for him. He's doing well. And if he throws some peanuts at the church, oh, everybody's fantastic. Ah, that's a wonderful child of God. He loves the Lord. That's what we hear all the time. Some nonsense. Take heed to the word of salvation. Judgments are coming. And judgments are coming thick and heavy. At all times, we are being judged according to the lives we live. I know some of us have dismissed judgments already. Oh, grace has covered everything. Even if you kill, grace covered it. Whatever you do, grace has covered it. You steal continually, grace covers it. You are a liar, the son of the devil, grace covers you. That's the kind of nonsense we hear day in and day out. Walk away from there. Let me read verse 1 again. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. There is so much of drifting away today. We have drifted away completely from the issues of eternal life. Eternal life has become an assumption. So long as you are getting so many things, then eternal life is guaranteed. So long as you are speaking in tongues, eternal life is guaranteed. We even have this body that says, once saved, permanently saved. But the scripture talks about the person who turns away, that can never be accepted again to God. The scripture talks about those who are turned to the devil. So many examples. And the scripture talks about the person who is backslidden. Every kind of falling away from God. Have you fallen away? Have you been carried away by the so-called preachings of the day today? Have you also deceived yourself to do the wrong things? There is this madness that, well, somehow we'll sleepwalk into heaven. Somehow the thing will happen. It will not happen. Not by the scripture. Not by the pure scripture. There is so much of the interpretation of the scripture today that sometimes you wonder what is going on. Put all of the scripture together. Don't differentiate some from the other. The scripture has not changed. Genesis to Revelation, one sentence. Jesus is Lord. And everything that does not fit into that sentence is useless. Praise the Lord. Take heed. Earnest heed. More earnest heed. Not just earnest heed. More earnest heed to the things that we have heard because the judgments are there. I pray that none of us shall fall unto this judgment. Father, help us. Help those who are desirous to stand, to be able to stand. And Lord, bring conviction upon the hearts of the casual, upon the hearts of the deceived. For many deceivers have come into this world, as you said they would be. And so many of them are gaining disciples by the second, by the moment. Lord God, help. According to your tender mercies, reach out and bring convictions again into our hearts that we turn back to you and serve you distinctively, serve you truly, and get back to the original word of salvation and walk in the ways of salvation, showing proof and fruits of salvation in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.